team of reporters will bring you the latest on the ground. First to Amelia Adams in Washington, D.C. Amelia, protesters and police are still clashing on the doorstep of the White House. Mark, we have just moved one block from the White House and this is the scene in Washington, D.C. Thousands of protesters who had gathered quite peacefully for the most part at the president's doorstep moved away from that police line and they've moved down the street and we are hearing huge flashbangs. Uh, the police, the Metropolitan Police, are firing back with tear gas. So what you're seeing now is what we have seen, this pattern over the last few days where these protests start very peaceful. They're organised Black Lives Matter protests. They're asking the authorities here in America to kneel with them in memory of George Floyd and to show them some solidarity and some understanding for the issues that they want changed in this country. They have, that has moved on and escalated and now you have a lot of peaceful protesters and families that have gone home and there is this element which is quite a, a tough element, quite an angry element and they are taking to the streets of Washington DC. They are on their knees and you can probably hear they're yelling, don't shoot, don't shoot. It's a very tense situation. Police are prepared, as you can see. The National Guard is here, social... The social, ser the social service officers are here, and this is, the, this is the local DC police. So you've got every agency available. The president is in the White House a block away. He has not addressed the nation. He has tweeted a few moments ago, simply saying, law and order. Mark? Another flashbang there, Amelia. Amelia, if you can hear me, yeah. what's, yep. the, what's the vibe you're getting off the protesters with the police? Is it largely peaceful or do you think that it's, it's, it's getting more tense than that? There's two really, really distinct elements. There's a lovely undercurrent of peaceful protesters here who want to talk about their stories growing up as black people in this country, the systemic racism which needs to change. And those are powerful messages. Unfortunately, Mark, they're getting drowned out by what you are seeing right now. And those are the protesters who are so angry and they are motivated to destroy this... Whoa! All right, we're moving back. So police are retaliating with tear gas. Yep, you OK? They are firing rubber bullets. You can see that police officer standing on the car firing rubber bullets into the crowd. The protesters, I've got to point out, they are on their knees. They have their hands up. They're saying, don't shoot. They're saying, kneel for George. This is the situation as night falls in America's capital. Amelia, who are they firing at? Yes, sorry, we will do. Absolutely, thank you, sir. Uh, Mark, they're firing at the protesters, so what's happening here is another one. OK, flashbang, and another one. What's happening is the protesters started hurling projectiles at officers, um, rocks, bottles filled with things, and as soon as that happened... We're backing up, we're backing up. Uh, it really escalated, and so what you're seeing with the flashbangs and what you're hearing now is the right... Is the right police? Yep, yep. Is the right police escalating? We're, we're re retaliating and trying to push the protesters back okay? into a certain area. I'm fine. You thank you, sir. Hey, so that they can, they can. Thank you. And so you can see there are people like this man who just came up to check on us, and they're saying it's this is not okay. I can hear other protesters saying, "Don't do this. You're doing." this to your own people. You're making us all look bad. They have a message they want to get through and this is not it, Mark. Amelia, a completely different atmosphere there from what was seen in Minneapolis because we did see really heavy confrontation with the protesters and police, but here it doesn't look as violent as that. As I say that, it looks like there was some confrontation, but it seems like a different mood. Yeah, it's just very... Oh, there we go again, back. It's just very tense, Mark, you're right. Um, and I think what we will inevitably, unfortunately, see is that as people get hurt here, uh, and they are getting hurt, the mood will change again, and as darkness falls, people get angrier uh, and more violent. And... Jesus! All right. Down? That was close. OK, so that's, uh, that was close. I'm just going to move away. And that was tear gas, which I know from experience is very unpleasant. So, look, this is going to happen, I think, up and down the streets of DC because there are protesters here, Nick, stay with me, who do not, who do not want to go home. They're not ready. They're not ready 
to move on from this protest. They want to stay on their knees in the streets saying, kneel with us for George Floyd. And the officers aren't going to do that. And so this is going to continue to escalate. What are the... Uh, poli Behind you. Mills, what are the uh, protesters... Sorry, what are the police actually saying to the protesters? Are they telling them, keep moving, keep moving, get out of the way, or what? Yeah, so that's what you're hearing. You're hearing, move back, move back. And you can probably see there, they've got their batons out, uh, yelling, move back, move back. And they are pushing them. They did ask. The protesters didn't comply. And now there are projectiles being thrown in both directions. Amelia, give us a sense, how close are you to the White House there? How, if you were to walk now to the White House, how long would it take? Uh, when I started talking to you, Mark... Whoa! Flashbang! You're OK. Thank you, sir. When I started talking to you, Mark, we were one block from the President's front door. We're now about... We've walked about three blocks in that time, uh, down the main street here, uh, H Street, northwest of DC. And this is a beautiful area. I was here two months ago as coronavirus shut down this city. It's a gorgeous historic city, as you know. And now a lot of these shop fronts have been vandalised. Now what you're seeing is the police... Thank you, sir. The police holding their line. Man has a right to immediate medical attention, man. OK. All right, someone's down to my left. What's he saying, And Amelia? here we have this pattern again. So the... Someone's down. He needs medical attention. OK, so, Mark, the police are now asking us all to stand and to stand back from their line. This guy's been quite badly hurt. OK. Was he hit? Yeah. What do you think? Gas? What do you think happened there, Amelia? Okay. What do you think happened to that person? Was that a rubber bullet? What was he hit with? Does, any, does anyone know what he was hurt with? OK, there we go. There you go, Mark. So the protester that you're seeing is hit by a rubber bullet and they're extremely pain, painful and extremely dangerous. So that's what the police are trying to use to control this crowd and keep them in position. We've now stopped moving. We've now got about two blocks, which is clear. So the police have cleared that two blocks. And on the other side is the White House and another huge crowd just like this one. It seems like, Amelia, that they're content to keep the protesters where they've got them now. They seem to have hemmed them down that end of the street. It looks like they're, they're content with that now. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened here last night. That containment strategy, as you would know, DC is very much on a grid and keeping everyone in certain blocks um, so that they can t contain the situation as best that they can. And even as all of this is happening around me, Mark, I can hear people walking past yelling, Stop. Don't do this. Stop the violence. This is not what we're about. Walk. Don't run. Um, don't let them make us look bad. So this is a real conflicting message that we're seeing right across this country this weekend. Uh, and now well, it'll be the third night here in DC, but the sixth night in other parts of the country. Uh, it's very, very sad, really, and it's very confronting. Amelia, that gentleman that's... Uh, oh, he's on the phone now, but I was going to ask you to turn around if... One of the people there would like to give, talk to us and give us a sense of why they are there. If you can. You know what? He's my security and I'm very grateful that he's... <laughs> he's my security guard and he's very <laughs> grateful that he's just turned up. So I'm going to ask someone else for you and we'll get a little bit of a sense. I've got to, I've got to pick my... Uh... I understand. Excuse me, sir. Would you mind me tell, talking? You don't want to talk? Telling me why you've come out today? What's that? Oh, OK. He shouldn't be here. I think there's probably quite a lot of people who shouldn't be here, but we'll find someone who can talk to us. So would you mind telling me why you're here today? No. They don't want to talk. They don't want to be on camera. Why did you come here today? Why are you part of this? I came here to protest against the senseless killing of Mr Floyd and countless others in America and just throughout history of the United States. So that's why we're here. We're just trying to peacefully protest and let the whole country know in the world that what's going on here is wrong. And it's, this should be fixed immediately. That was such an important message. And the march was so beautiful and peaceful for so long. Outside the White House, things got a little bit heated. Yeah. Then we moved away from the White House. Now, what has just happened here? It has turned ugly. How does that make you feel when you've come with such an important message to get across? It makes me feel terrible. Like, to be a U.S. citizen, like, this just is just disrespectful. Like, I, it makes it hard for me to say that I'm from the United States. Like, it just puts a, such a bad 
vibe and by that energy in my heart, knowing that I was born and raised in Virginia. And it just hurts for me to say that I'm a U.S. citizen because with stuff like this, we were peacefully protesting at the White House. Yeah, we were shaking maybe the fence a little bit. Everyone's a little angry, of course, but no one did anything. They're shooting us with pellets. And then when we leave peacefully, we didn't have to leave the White House. We left, come down the street, and they start throwing, like, bombs type things to disperse us. And they're shooting from a guy's jumping up there on the roof and shooting us from above. Like, it's crazy. Like, that stuff doesn't make any sense. We witnessed a moment uh, about an hour ago now. Down, down, down. All right. What is that? A firework or something. I don't know. Okay. That's all right. We witnessed about an hour ago a moment where one of the um, Secret Service officers did kneel yeah. in front of the White House. No one else in that line did. What would it have meant or what would it have changed if that whole line of police that you were chanting, kneel for George, kneel with us, what would have changed had they done that? First off, I didn't see the person kneel, but if they did, that's kudos to them. That's real good. If everyone kneeled in that line, it would honestly feel like it would mean the world to us, honestly. Like, We've been asking them to kneel. I know a lot of them probably think what is going on is wrong. I know not everyone is racist in these cop uh, and police uh, agencies, and I know that a lot of them think what we're doing is correct. They're just following orders. So if more people just start to be more individual in this and start coming together inside the system, yeah. they can help us outside because we're I doing just, everything we can. I just want to ask you very quickly, because we are live on air in Australia, how does this end? What stops this? Because this is night after night now. It's the same pattern and people are obviously not willing to peacefully protest and go home. I think the only thing that stops this is when we get real reform from the government, uh, local, county, state, national. We need complete change of the judicial system. Yep. Um, we need to stop incarcerating so many African-American people. We need to stop killing African-American people and other minorities. We need a complete 180 of what we have right now. It's going to take a lot, but we're going to be here every day if they don't. So okay. we're here every day. So thank you so much for sharing your perspective and your insights with us and stay safe. You yeah, too. all the you best. Thank you. Thank you. So there you go, Mark, as you just heard, these people are going to be here, he said, every day until something changes. You do get a sense, and I know uh, through history, 1968, 1992, 2020 has brought something different to America. This is an absolutely critical moment and how it is managed and how this country moves forward here is so important. Amelia, fantastic cross. Uh, stay safe and uh, we'll be crossing to you throughout the morning. We'll talk to you soon, okay?